startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from startuprad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today I'm bringing you an interview with Alex from my football space in media partnership with the fintech forum which is an annual event taking place in germany in frankfurt in november each year okay you can already guess it it's over but i'm interviewing past participants and i'm very confident frank will again have another fintech forum in november this year so let me first welcome alex hey how you doing hi jorn it's alex here i'm doing very well thank you as opposed to the usual picture of a founder who starts right from the dorm, um, you have had a really big professional life before you actually started in um, in a startup, founding your own startup. So I've been stalking you on LinkedIn, and as everybody would like to learn more or connect to you directly, you can go down here in the show notes there is a link to our blog and on our blog, there's a link to your personal LinkedIn profile. So when I've been looking through that, I've seen we have something in common. We both did an apprenticeship uh, at the bank. Um, and then I see you've been also a consultant in financial services, capital markets. Can you tell us a little bit about this and how this influence not only you but also your life and your view on companies and startups sure um yeah let me let me introduce myself and first of all maybe a big thank you to you to uh, present me and host me in today's podcast um i'm, I'm born and raised in frankfurt and frankfurt is uh, one of the few european cities with a big skyline and i have to admit this uh, influenced my career a lot from the start. I was always fascinated by the um, innovation and dynamics of investment banking. I was really inspired by that and uh, tried to understand and learn the job from, from scratch. So I did a banking apprenticeship in 95, uh, quite a long time ago. And uh, But that enabled me to understand how banks work from the inside and how financial services actually work and, and uh, to differentiate between the work with retail clients and, and institutional clients and, and corporate clients. So, so this was the foundational layer of my, my financial services career. And post that, I started to work in FX trading uh, for an investment bank and really learned how derivatives are composed, how pricing of complex financial derivatives works and, and, and how the industry functions, uh, which really gave me a lot of in-depth knowledge of, of the industry and uh, give my international and, and also, uh, I would say, culturally interested background. I decided to work for a consultancy rather than being stuck in front of six or eight screens. And uh, that, that was what I wanted to do. So a consultancy was the perfect uh, setup for that. So the first uh, five years of my consulting career, I, I worked for Accenture which was a great platform. You learn consulting, uh, how projects are set up, how project teams are set up. And um, that was my starting point as an entrepreneur. I was hired to work for a consultancy in London and set up the German-speaking business for an English for, for London-based consultancy in capital markets. And as you have seen in my LinkedIn profile, um, you mentioned this before the call, we both worked for the same uh, managers in the past. Uh, I had the pleasure to work with them uh, for Capco, which was a capital markets company, uh, consulting company. And uh, I had the pleasure to build up the German team together with the managing partners there. As you said, we've been working in a very similar area, but actually we never met in person that we are aware of so far, right? I guess there's a couple of people we came across um, that, that we both. So, but we never met in person. I don't think so. And um, now the interesting stuff is you have been with this company for approximately 10 years as a consultant, as a partner, as a member of the managing uh, board. Um, I would be curious why and how did you decide to then 
take the big leap of faith and get into entrepreneurship. What did trigger you there? Well, first of all, uh, after 15 years, it's been it's actually been close to 20 years of consulting. Uh, I thought it was a good time to um, reset, spend some more time with the family. I have two kids. I'm happily married. Live here in Frankfurt with my my family, and uh, I had to work a lot during during my career in financial services. So it was a good time to spend some more time with the family, spend some more time with the kids, and and as you do that, and as you are in the middle of your your life, I, I don't know what my life expectancy would be, but I'm 44 now, so I guess I have probably reached nearly 50 percent. Um, and uh, it was a good time to uh, to think about what I what I want to do and what I'm what I have passion for. I wasn't really looking for uh, founding a company. Uh, the idea really came to me, but I'm very interested in uh, innovative technologies. I'm really passionate about finance, and I'm very passionate about sports. I'm a very active person. And uh, like that, the idea of setting up a sports tech company really just hit me in the face, um, I must say. And uh, that was the way I started to, to, uh, to found the company. Hmm. That, that was something I want to ask you because um, usually it's with sports, you, you're either passionate all through your life or they never really touch you. For example, for me, I never follow Bundesliga or uh, football or something like this. And so it's, it's um, one of the people who would not be in your target group. Um, can us, can you tell us a little bit about your passion for sports and how this, how this actually drove you to your current business idea? The well, the initial trigger for the business idea was was really driven through technology, um, because I saw the potential of the technology, and then combined it with the sport. But uh, to answer your your question about sport, one thing that is um, really common across all sorts of sports, not only not only football as it is in my company, but really all sports from amateur to professional sport, is the emotion and the passion the people who play the sport and also the people who coach the sport and the people who uh, who, who get entertained by the sport um, being you know parents friends or, or just purely fans and this is something everybody shares is the emotion the passion for the sport and for the activity and um, and it's and it's a very global thing there's no difference uh, about the emotion of a fan in Australia in in the US in, in Asia or in Europe everybody loves um, to watch sport and, and to cheer with it and uh, we know when your when your favorite team wins this is something which is is uncomparable to 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 a lot of other experiences mm, i know where you're going at the only difference may be the t either the sports you're playing for example cricket or rugby which is not pretty popular in germany american football and another example or um, the team you are a fan of. I do believe there's a lot of uh, competition between the teams in the Bundesliga as well. So now we know you have been a partner with a professional service company in capital markets. You are passionate for football. And the business idea actually, as you so literally said, hit you in your face. Can you tell us about the moment and how it actually developed from there? Of course, I'm. Uh, I'm telling you really how it how it worked. So I was I was attending a blockchain and AI class. I'm currently doing an executive MBA at Frankfurt School of Finance and Management, and um, I was sitting there and I've been dealing with with blockchain from a cryptocurrency perspective for the last six seven years, and so I understood the technology. But as I was sitting there, the uh, and the professor was talking about the digitization of acids and his vision that in the next 10 15 years nearly everything that is of value is going to be represented on blockchain as a as the as a technology to securely store and and legally represent your um um your ownership uh, that was really when i thought about that there doesn't exist a platform to date where i as a fan uh, would have the ability to um invest in um, in a player or in a football club um, and that was really the starting point where I was uh, you know I, 
what usually happens when you have an idea, um, you you probably assume, yeah, um, I don't know the entire market. Let's Google a little bit and research and see if, if my if maybe maybe there is a company who offers what what you. Uh, thought was interesting or thought was appealing but there was nothing there was no competitor there's nearly no sports tech uh, company globally that addresses uh, blockchain uh, offerings of blockchain products for um for the sports industry um, that has changed by now uh, the industry has become very active but i'm talking about uh, september october 2019 when i really had this initial idea so the market was really immature and the professor was talking about uh, the maturity curve of blockchain as a technology. And, and I guess the audience who's listening to this would fully agree that blockchain is slowly stepping out of its, um, you know, baby shoes. Uh, maturity level is really reaching um, a, a tipping point where mass adoption in, you know, multiple industries is, is, is about to start. So, but it's still a very immature uh, in terms of market market penetration. And, and that was the point where I really um, I, got, I got really excited about a secure technology, a cheap technology, a technology that allows to divide assets into zillions. You know, you could literally de- decide yourself in how many pieces you want to um, strip down your 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 asset. You know, imagine a beautiful painting that is an asset that is worth multi millions that you could never take a share in, but now you could legally. Uh, represent this asset by, say, a million a million pieces, and suddenly it becomes affordable, and you could really be an owner of a beautiful, very um, also very costly uh, um, costly piece of art um, that is changing in value. And maybe ten years later, um, you could have participated in the and uh, with blockchain allowing this to be easily uh, dividable and uh, making it available to retail customers. There is a lot of merit in this, and and I was. Into, into football and, and and the ability to look at players as a human being that represents a player, so the which regulates the transfer when someone is bought and 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 uh, going to another club and and allowing a fan to participate, not so much from an investment perspective, but uh, from the perspective of taking part and being part of the game. I I always tell my friends, I think it does make a difference when you are in the stadium and you watch your teams play. And you could say, you could actually say, look at the team down there. I I own part of them, even if it's just a euro or two. But suddenly a fan, a normal fan, normal people become part of the game and and have the option to show their loyalty to the player uh, and also to the club and potentially even financially support the club. Um, so, so there's many aspects to this. I think there's many different motivations. Uh, I want to make clear at this point: this this was never really the um, uh, the perspective of an investment uh, platform, and uh, but that was a starting point. And uh, as we then, as a, as an entrepreneur, you start investigating your idea and the pros and cons. You do a lot of research. I spoke to a lot of uh, people from the sports industry and and fine tuned the programs and. Uh, the, sorry, excuse me. The products, and uh, we are we are not at the play investment <laughs> stage yet. Actually, we have changed quite a lot because we understood uh, that offering a product that is so close to an investment thing might address very few fans. I mean, it's very interesting, of course, for those people. But we want to have a product that is um, that is appealing to all fans. So uh, we have uh, come up with different ideas. So, um, bottom line is you fine-tuned your product to be more driven by passion than investment returns. Let us take two perspectives on this product. Let us first, like, go through um, how it would look like for a person that does not yet have any idea what my football space is, and let us get how they would approach it, how they can get into it, how a typical customer journey would look like and uh, what are the benefits out of that? Yes, of course. The uh, Well, as I said, we want to offer a product that is of global scale and has the ability to address all fans globally and all professional football clubs globally. 
Um, so if if my pa- if I have a passion for my club and I want to become a member of the family of the of the club, there is few products available. Of course, I can uh, buy a jersey or I can buy a ticket, but um, I can't really become a member of the family of the club. So we decided it would be really appealing to rethink uh, membership of a club and offer a digital version of it that is uh, enabling the fan to become part of the club's identity. Um, at, at this point, I think we need to differentiate between the way things are uh, regulated in Germany versus outside of Germany. We have the Vereinswesen, so the, uh, the the club sports club is usually represented by um, by members that have legal voting right. At the end of the year, they decide who is going to be the board of the of the of the club and. Uh, a very official view. This is not the, so much the case in, in other countries, and and we don't want to replace this. This is always going to to be there and has has a lot of I would say merit and right to be there. But it's also a very local thing. So for um, personally, I'm a big fan of my local club in Frankfurt, of Eintracht Frankfurt. So yes, I have a membership of this club because I'm locally here. I can go to the uh, members uh, reunion, you know, at the end of the year and and, and vote. This is of course something that I could do be, being being locally here. But imagine I was living in London, but I was originally born in Frankfurt. Or imagine I was just born somewhere, but I, I love Eintracht Frankfurt because the player from my country plays plays for this club. And I want to be part of the, the club's identity. And uh, so we have designed uh, what we call a fan badge. Um, it's a licensed, licensed club product that allows you to become officially a, a supporter of the, of the club. And the club would give you... Um, specific things that 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 help you in your in your fan journey um, one thing that we realized when we digged into what clubs offer they usually don't aim to understand their fans very well of course this is changing with um, with digital transformation as i may call it but this is a phenomenon as we've seen with a lot of older type of companies old industry was always usually product centric and, and and the product was in the in the center of the activity, whereas newer companies, especially tech driven companies, they try to be very customer centric and understand the needs of the customer and then adapt the product so they fit the needs of the customer. And we want to enable clubs to understand uh, the needs of the fan. And every fan is different. If you look at big clubs like, uh, say, for example, Barcelona with 250 million fans or Bayern Munich with, with over 100 million fans. They have over 50 million Facebook followers and probably and they have 300,000 members. So there is a huge gap between the followership and the people who actually consider themselves to be um, part of the club's family as a, as a, as a club member. So um, And then you ask the, the, these clubs, how much do you actually know of your of your digital fan base, and there's there's not so much they could say. Of course, there's uh, different analytics uh, those those global platforms offer to give them some insight, but the fan is never really asked what they want, and this is what we want to change. We want to offer um, a product where you could, with two or three clicks, can become a member of your club, and the club asks you during this process, uh, what are your two key interests in the club? In the club's products, and the club will not send you advertisement or or penetrate you with stuff you don't want to see, um, but will only give you um, offers and 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 basically benefits that you're really interested in. Um, let me make one example to make this uh, make this more visual. Um, for example, assume assume I am a very uh, um, how can I say that. Um, I'm not very wealthy, but I love football. I have a low salary, so I can't spend a lot of money on um, on highly priced events or highly priced uh, merchandise. But I'm, I go to the stadium. Uh, I try to go to the stadium uh, stadium every every other week. So I'm really interested in discounts. Maybe a discount code would be the thing that really triggers me and and makes me happy. So the club understands this and then doesn't offer me all the other things, but sends me. Uh, sends me discount codes or it sends me opportunities to to make my journey a little bit more affordable which is of course then leading to to more happiness on my side because I see okay the club listens to what I want and and doesn't doesn't bother me but rather give me what I want but there's other fans who are on the other side of, of the of the of the value chain very wealthy people 
Um, they don't really care about discounts, but they still love the club. They have a lot of passion for the club, but they would like to get maybe uh, VIP tickets or exclusive content, exclusive meetings with specific people and are willing to pay a lot of money for this. These people also don't want to be penetrated with offers for, for all the other stuff, but they would like to be uh, triggered on those things. So um, at the moment, the club understands the different need patterns of their fans. Uh, the club can better work with it and, and also um, uh, create more, um, a more happy fan base. Yeah. And all those benefits basically come from, you go on your website, um, the link of course is down here in the show notes. You go, uh, you purchase a digital membership there and then fill out uh, the questions, as you said, on the app. And this all is blockchain based and you get a digital blockchain based membership in the respective football club. Is that, is that about right? Um, that is about right. I mean, the website, we will have an app as the main uh, platform for our, for our fans. We also integrate, we will also integrate a lot of the functionality, or at least we offer it uh, to be integrated in the club's uh, IT infrastructure, especially the, the client onboarding is not something that you have to do on our platform. But as technology gets more complex, uh, also the clubs understand that some things, it makes more sense to to actually use it on, on a platform rather than trying to integrate everything in your own IT infrastructure. But we are really open to, to discuss this with, uh, according to the club's needs. Um, but yes, you will, you will do that on, uh, on our, on our app uh, in your example and, and, and offer, uh, offer digital membership. Uh, you said blockchain based. Yes, it's blockchain based. And we get the question a lot. Why, why, why does a membership have to be um, blockchain blockchain base let me elaborate on that a little bit if that's okay with you yeah sure go ahead the of course a pure membership badge doesn't have to be uh, on blockchain as a technology although you could already argue since it's a document of authentication or identification it makes sense that it's on a on a technology that allows to do that in a secure way because it's an identification document towards your club but then if you think this a little further, um, and we were talking about voting rights before, uh, we believe family members of a club or of, of a union, they should be allowed to, to be asked a couple of things and, and participate and, and actually voice their opinion and vote about a couple of things. And as we're talking about voting rights, which are attached to the, to the fan badge per se, um, it's nothing that you can purchase. The voting right will be part of the of the. Of, of your membership, um, then it's very important that you understand in, a, in an authentic way that this person has voted. So it can't be compromised and the club can be sure and also the voters can be sure that um, maybe no bot or no other technology has compromised your voting system and is tweaking decisions in, in one or the other way. Um, but it's really transparent for the club and for the fans to see, okay, this is, this is a real voting that happened. And, and then if you think this a little further, why, why blockchain is so important, um, there's a lot of products down the road in our uh, platform that will require secure um, technology. When you, when you talk about digital assets, for example, imagine um, a club issues certain uh, things virtually, which is definitely something especially interesting for kids, um, like, you know, like your skins in Fortnite, uh, but these things are assets that you you can actually buy. You can buy from your club. Uh, fans can uh, can really have a lot of fun with that. Uh, this is definitely not for everybody, um, but for the people who who are passionate about virtual items and digital items, this is really a, a cool thing that you can also experience in in many other areas of of your life already. But football clubs, especially in Germany, are still very conservative about it. So we will see where the journey takes us. But blockchain as a technology layer for our products, we believe is the right right thing to enable this this in the future. Mm -hmm. I understand what are the benefits for the uh, different groups of fans and dash customers. Um, the football club actually learns something about their fans and like their geographical distribution, stuff like this. Um, are there additional benefits for the club despite 
learning and being better in reaching out and understanding the fans? Of course, there's there, there's a lot of benefits for the clubs, as we believe. First of all, um, we have to. I think we have to be clear for the club. There is there's two main benefits. It is getting to know the interests of your of your fans, but also a, a monetization aspect. Professional football clubs have a huge commercial responsibility that is required to fund the sporting activity, and this is something that is disputed heavily by fans because fans see clubs getting too commercial, maybe trying to um, commercialize fans too much, and, and the industry is getting away from their original heritage, which is, of course, very much driven around the pure sport and the the um, the athletes. So, But still, clubs have, have to have a commercial agenda in order to maintain and sustain their, their sports business. So this is a big thing. And we believe, as we are enabling the club to bring the fans globally closer to the club, due to a membership which you have to pay for um, this will give the club a better financial footing it's nothing that you you have to um, uh, let's put it this way um, you, you can't become a better fan because you invest more money there's you know be a standard price um, but because you have so many fans uh, there's a huge financial potential for for a lot of football clubs Let me give give one example, uh, and maybe staying with the big German club. Bayern Munich, uh, Bayern Munich is the biggest uh, club in terms of members globally. They have 300,000 members, but if you compare this number to their fan base, which is over 100 million, this 300,000 is a really minute figure. And we believe there are a lot of fans out there who would love to become a part of the club's family, but they need something that is easier to access than an online form that you have to fill rather than what we offer in, you know, in two, three clicks, which, which is a typical um, user experience in a lot of apps we have nowadays with, with, modern, with modern apps and, 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 and tech companies. And uh, we believe there is a huge market for and, and, and a big interest in, in the fans of, of Bayern Munich. And imagine two or three million convert and buy this digital membership. Um, imagine a membership costs two euro a month that would revenue uh, for the club six million euro a month and over 70 million a year which of course uh, is even for a big super club like Bayern Munich a lot of money in their annual in their annual budget so um, and, and I think this gives you a little bit of an idea where it becomes interesting for for clubs they increase their fan base um, they're actually convert them to members which is a very intuitive thing for a club uh, it's nothing uh, where you can really talk about over commercialization because Increasing the family um, and 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 allowing people who share a love of the club to become a member is is nothing where you could really have a bad feeling. They're not selling like okay, if you pay more, you become a better fan. But everybody is the same, and and with that, um, the club can uh, can of course uh, have a better financial uh, better financial footing. So these we believe are the two uh, main benefits, um, at least at the forefront. If you look a little bit deeper, of course, clubs will prepare themselves for the next generation of fans, which we're going to be, which are going to be Gen Z fans, which are going to be more tech savvy fans. And clubs at the moment offer very little for this, uh, these type of fans. There is a lot of research out there that stipulates that, that these fans probably will have, will struggle watching, watching a full game in front of a screen. They will always have their tablet or phone you know, in one hand, maybe need a second screen and to do to do something while they're watching while they're watching the game, and this has to be addressed. Um, uh, some clubs tap into esports, which is a very interesting um, interesting thing. Uh, personally, I have to admit I'm not a big esports user at the moment. But this is because because I'm not, I was never a big gamer, but I believe uh, that for the younger generation, this is how um, clubs have to set themselves up. Uh, in, in a more digital way and offer more digital products for their fans to allow especially those who can't be in the stadium to to partake and and share their emotion and that also answers one of the questions i would have had in store for you because i assume since uh two years um from the fan um, are the annual uh, are the monthly fees? So basically, you will take a small cut of these fees um, for your services, I assume. 
yeah, the way we haven't uh, really, um, I have to admit, we haven't really uh, sorted this out yet because we're really just driven by the idea of increasing the fan base. But yes, there will be a commercial arrangement in place with the clubs that uh, allows us to cover our costs and, and, and make some money. But our main idea is to, to improve the fan engagement and, and prepare the clubs for the next generation. We are now recording for more than 30 minutes. Thank you very much for being so open um, so far with us. We just talked about money and I would be curious how you guys are one financed and second um are you guys open for external investments if an investor watches this we are about the company we are six uh, people in the management team and we are nine staff in total we are growing and we are hiring mostly it and, and marketing staff uh, to get the message out and to build the it platform we have already collected um, investor money we had the second capital round Uh, one by the management team and one by business angels. And uh, we are seeking capital um, towards uh, end of Q2, beginning of Q3 this year. Mm -hmm. Everybody who'd like to reach out for, uh, to you can do this down here. There's not only your personal LinkedIn profile, but also the company website. What you guys are currently looking for, I assume not only a lot of fans of their respective football clubs, but also people um, in the management of football clubs who would be open to work with you guys, right? That's correct. We are, we are already talking to... Um, a lot of Bundesliga clubs, there is a lot of interest. Um, I think this is because of two reasons. First of all, that uh, the topic of digital business models in, in current times is, is more relevant than ever. I think it's always been on the agenda of football clubs, but now it has become even more relevant because fans can't uh, attend in the stadium any longer and, and clubs have to have to adjust. So there is a lot of openness uh, from the clubs. We're having a lot of uh, very active conversations And um, and secondly, we have um, an investor team and a management team that is very close to football and has a lot of brings a lot of football background, and with that a lot of football network. So we're having having a lot of conversations, but we're of course always open for, for new conversations. And if if people are listening and think this is interesting for them, I'd be more than glad to uh, to have a conversation. Definitely. Great. And uh, everybody who'd like to learn more, we'll have you guys uh, linked down here. People can just visit your website and then download your app. Is your app already available? We're building the app. Uh, we're building the app. The app will be available in the uh, App Store, we believe, towards the end of the year. There's a lot of work to be done to get it right. We will pay a lot of attention towards usability and, and making it easy and intuitive to use. The, and that's why it's going to take take some time okay so everybody who who would like to uh, download the app you guys will share it with us and then we'll disseminate it uh, across all social media channels and add it here likely beginning of 2022 alex It's such a pleasure having you here. Uh, people may may not have noticed a few interruptions, but we also uh, will also edit out a lot of those interruptions, meaning we're recording now for more than 35 minutes and the actual interview will be shorter. And this is due to all the restarts that we had during, uh, due to the small interruptions. Thank you very much for sticking with me. It was a pleasure talking to you and best of luck. Thank you, Jörn, and it was a pleasure talking to you. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring. 